everyone, welcome to Rule Breaker. Today we're going to take a look at how to play as the Xja Kingdom in Twilight Imperium 4th Edition. So these guys are uh, turtle by uh, nature as well as how they look. They like to defend, um, they're diplomatic, uh, they like to you know play a peaceful game. Uh, so let's take a look at what you get at the start of the game. So your starting technology is Graviton Laser System, which is this one here. Um, this one is a yellow technology and it has the text. You may exhaust this card before one or more of your units use Space Cannon. Hits produced by those units must be assigned to non-fighter ships if able. So this tech plays down into the turtle strategy of defending um, opponents who attack your systems if you've got a PDS there and PDS is the unit that uses space cannon um, they'll have to soak up the damage with their most uh, powerful ships rather than fighters that's what that's all about um, the XCHA's starting units are uh, as follows they have a carrier which is used for moving around infantry and fighters and that sort of thing uh, two cruisers which are the ships that can move a bit further than most and they have a move to at the start. Uh, three fighters which are the little guys that are uh, usually used for soaking up damage. And uh, they have four infantry which are these um, infantry units here, the ground forces that you use to take over planets. And uh, they have a space dock for building more units and they have a PDS which is a defensive unit, the one mentioned on the Graviton laser system. Alright, this is the Xjaz starting system. It has two planets, Ark and Ren and Ark and Tau. Um, Ark and Ren has two resources and three influence, while Ark and Tau has one and one. Uh, meaning you're probably going to want to put your space dock down on Ark and Ren because that gives you the opportunity to produce more units. How that works is you take two for the space dock plus the number of resources on the planet. In the case of Ark and Ren, that's two. Making it four, so you'll be able to build four units um, whenever you produce in the system and you use the space dock on Ark and Ren as opposed to only three if you had it on Ark and Tau. Um, having a look at your units at the start of the game in your home system it's going to seem a little underwhelming I think. Um, you've got a couple of cruisers which are not really your strength you're not going to be flying all over the place. Only having one carrier means that you're not going to be able to expand very quickly. However, you do have this PDS and I recommend keeping that at home and defending your home from the very start. Alright, let's take a look here at the front of the XJAS sheet. Uh, here we have all of your different troop types here on the front. The XJA uses basic units, no special units at all. Um, but we're more interested in the special abilities here, so let's take a look at those. The first one reads, Peace Accords. After you resolve the primary or secondary ability of the Diplomacy Strategy card, you may gain control of one planet other than Mechat's Hall Rex that does not contain any units and is in a system that is adjacent to a planet you control. All right, so let's just take a look at Diplomacy itself. It's the number two uh, strategy card, and it's the defensive strategy card, okay? Um, it reads, Choose one system other than Mechat's Hall Rex that contains a planet you control. Each other player places a command token from his reinforcements in the chosen system, then ready each exhausted planet you control in that system. So essentially what that means is that everybody's gonna have to stick their strategy token down in a system that you want, these types of tokens here, and once they're in there, they'll never be able to activate them again for the rest of the round. Um, in the case of the Xja, um, doing this or indeed the secondary ability which is to spend one of these to ready some of your uh, planet cards so if you've used up a planet card you can refresh it with this ability as the extra doing either of these means you can activate the peace accords um, and that means that you um, take control of a planet any planet that is adjacent to an area that you control but let's just take a quick look at that on the board all right in this example um, the extra player is playing with the blue um, and They've just finished doing diplomacy somewhere else on the board, um, meaning that they can do peace accords. Uh, they are now free to take control of a planet adjacent uh, to a planet they control. Um, so in the case of them owning New Albion here, they are not able to take Megatol Rex as described in the ability, but they can take um, a planet in an adjacent system. So they could, for example, take Lodor here. Now, they don't have any troops in that system. Instead, 
they would use these little flag tokens that are used to mark points and stuff like that and stick it down on the Lodor planet and thus get the Lodor card. And as always, you get the card exhausted when you when you claim a planet. Um, so they could take Lodor. They wouldn't be able to take uh, Lore or Arnor here because they're not adjacent to the system that they have uh, units in. Um, however, something unusual but, but is actually a fact is that they could take control of a planet in the same system that they don't already control, like Starpoint in this example here. Uh, for the sake of the rules, a planet is adjacent to planets in its own system as well. So that's just something to be aware of. If you're stuck, you can actually do that. Also, a small note, I'm using the cruiser here as an example. I'll, even though the cruiser could move two spaces to this system, it still isn't adjacent. It's literally geographically adjacent. So this hex, this hex, and this hex are the only ones adjacent in this example, no matter what ships you have in there. So that's uh, that's peace accords. The ex other with uh, racial ability is Quash, which is this one here, which reads, when an agenda is revealed, you may spend one token from your strategy pool to discard that agenda and reveal one agenda from the top of the deck. Players vote on this agenda instead. So for example, if one of these agendas comes up in the agenda phase, like Homeland Defense Act, um, if you don't want this to be uh, acted upon, you can just say, okay, Quash, we're not doing that. Discard this card and another one comes in and that's that's used instead. And it's, it really is as simple as that. Um, players may ask you to do this for them and that is totally legal. You can do a deal with somebody, um, but the deal is not necessarily binding. Just be aware of that. Um, so, you know, you're going to be popular in the, uh, the agenda phase when these cards are coming out for your power to be able to get things to go away. Um, the extra have four commodities, which is pretty good. Um, they're good trade partners usually. Um, due to their defensive nature, uh, people may want to be trading with them because they don't fear them making crazy attacks. Um, <laughs> appearances can be deceiving, it depends on the, the, the player you're playing them. Um, but if you want to give some of these away, you can trade them for trade goods with other players. Um, four is a pretty good number to have. It makes you a very attractive trade partner. And let's also take a look at their flagship, the Lankara Sodu, uh, in a little bit more detail. Okay, the Lankara Sodu is this big ship here, the, the flagship for the Xja. Um, it's unique in a way that it has Space Cannon, uh, Space Cannon 5, rolling three dice, which is really good. Um, and that ties into its ability, which is you may use this unit space cannon against ships that are in an adjacent system. So you can fire that space cannon at any time that you would be able to fire space cannon um, at opponent's ships in an adjacent system. It's very unique, uh, basically like a mobile PDS unit is what that really is. Um, aggressive defensive unit in a way, if that makes uh, any kind of sense. Um, it also has sustained damage, meaning that after one hit it gets turned upside down, but it's still alive and uh, lives to fight another day, but a second hit removes it, kills it as normal. Um, as stats go, it has a cost of 8, which is pretty standard, it rolls 2 dice and hits on 7s, which is okay, only moves 1, um, and only has a capacity of 3. So not this fast moving juggernaut carrying loads of troops with it, um, but the space cannon times three that can fire into adjacent systems is pretty good and it's a it's a wonderful flagship to have for this type of uh, race where they're sitting back accumulating points and being as defensive as possible. The Xtra have two racial techs like every other race in the game uh, they have instinct training which is a green tech and they have nullification field which is a yellow tech uh, the, the green one only requires one prereq green, which is pretty uh, accessible. Um, the nullification field requires two. Bearing in mind that you do start with gravitation, uh, graviton laser system, so you're already part, a good part of the way there for this. Um, so let's take a look at these in more detail. The instinct training reads, you may exhaust this card and spend one token from your strategy pool when another player plays an action card. Cancel that action card. So this is any action card, um, at any time, really, as long as this card is not exhausted. Exhausting these cards can uh, usually means like turning it sideways or flipping it upside down, as long as you don't forget to refresh it again. Um, this is really powerful, especially if you um, 
are worried that somebody's action card is gonna you know tip the balance especially towards the end of the game keep this uh, keep this available it's a really really strong racial tech and something you should be striving for as one of your first ones in the game nullification field on the other hand is after another player activates a system that contains one or more of your ships you may exhaust this card and spend one token from your strategy pool immediately end that player's turn uh, this tech is really key to success with the Xcha. and um, they they thrive on defending and holding back um, and by forcing somebody to end their turn as soon as they activate a system it essentially means that it's going to take two players to cooperatively attack one system that's a key system for you in order for that attack to come off the first person who activates it they won't get to do anything there they won't get to move the ships in they won't get to attack you um, you will of course exhaust this strategy as it says there uh, this technology as it says there um, meaning you can't do it again in the same round opening the door for somebody else to attack but that same player can't uh, actually attack the same system making the notification field a very powerful defensive tool and easily one of the most uh, influential technologies in the game especially in the context of the Xja Kingdom the Xja also have their own promissory note uh, which has a racial ability that other players can use if you trade it to them you might want to give this to somebody to gain favor with them or to get something in return their one is called political favor which again is related to these agenda cards um, and it reads remove sorry after an agenda is revealed remove one token from the extra player's strategy pool and return it to his reinforcements then discard the revealed agenda and reveal one agenda from the top of the deck players vote on this gen agenda instead then return this card to the extra player so that's essentially the same ability as um, their quash ability that we spoke about a moment ago yeah and that's pretty much it for the extra um, they're pretty straightforward. This agenda stuff is is um, extremely contextual. You're probably not going to use it every turn, to be honest. Um, they've got this thing with the, the peace cords, which is going to allow you to um, claim planets even without attacking, which is interesting. But it's a very slow way to take planets. It's more of an additional way to take planets, as opposed to a core strategy thing. And something that you shouldn't really be relying on to take to take systems before the players get there i think at the start of the game only having the one carrier is uh, a little bit of a challenge you're gonna have to push out there um and you know you're in a bit of a weird position with technology having a yellow tech at the start does mean that you're one uh, part of the way to get in your nullification field which is really important for success with these guys um i do like the uh flagship the Lankara Sodu, I think it's really a good defensive ship and also I think you should upgrade PDS to PDS2 as soon as possible as well. The upgrade to PDS being PDS2 which is quite similar to the Lankara Sodu in, in that you can fire your space cannons into adjacent systems so you know you've got this whole thing going where people can't even get close to you before you're tearing them apart with PDS and the Lankara Sodu and your um, your racial tech, the notification field, stopping people from moving and inching closer to you. Uh, if you get a whole bunch of technologies and you control a decent portion of the uh, universe early, you can just sit back, build a whole bunch of these things and just wait for the, the game to come to you points wise. Uh, the extra can be really powerful and they can kind of have a bit of a dull game sometimes, especially if things are going well for you. Um, if they if things are going well for you though towards the end it can get really interesting when everybody tries to pile in and stop you from winning and that that can be a really exciting game as well like Imperium and the extra player ends up fighting off you know multiple opponents um, that's kind of all the tips I really have for these guys they're they're pretty straightforward hold back defend um, claim planets uh, score as many points as possible but they can take their time about it because they uh, have the firepower back home to defend um, which is a unique position to be in in this game so I hope you enjoy your game as the Xja Kingdom in TI4 please come back and watch the rest of the videos in the series and uh, if you have any questions throw them into the comments below uh, this has been Rule Breaker 
Thanks a million. See you again soon.